Guys, Goldie here, coming over here another video. And today I'm going to show you how to set up Tailwind CSS with Fast API. So to get started, open up VS Code, and let's first of all create a Fast API project. So let's start by typing main.py. So I've just created like a folder somewhere on my system, and I opened that folder inside our VS Code. And now I'm going to create my Fast API project. So let's get started. So you want to start out with importing from fast API. I'm going to do from fast API import fast API. And we're going to also be using um, file response. So let's do fast API dot responses import file response. And I'm going to create the app. So app echo fast API. So we've created the app now. And then we're going to do app dot get. And we're just gonna create. Uh, I'm just gonna like return a, a home page. Like let's say we're making a website. We're just gonna return a simple home page. So this is gonna be um, def index. It's gonna be our index page for our website. And this is gonna return a file response. Now this is where we want to create our HTML file. So let's create a new file. Index.html. And let's just create, let's just add the HTML template here. So HTML, I think it's colon five. Here we go. So we got our HTML template. We're gonna add a simple H1 tag here, just saying hello world, something like that. So here we're gonna return our HTML file. So we're gonna do dot indicating that the index.html file is inside of the directory when we're running fast API. So because these two are in the same directory, we can do dot and then slash if I can actually get the slash and then you can see if I autofill for me because I have the um, path autofill plugin on VS Code but you guys might not see that and that should pretty much be like a basic fast API application so to run that um, before actually before running it I am going to create a virtual environment so I'm going to use python mvnv I'm going to create an environment called env I'll create this env file and now I'm going to go inside of that environment. So go to env bin activate if you're on Linux. If you're on Windows, it's going to be something like env scripts and then something around that. I don't know, I don't remember exactly, but it's going to be on the screen in post editing. So you guys can see what it is. So that is going to be the thing you type for if you're on Windows. So this now should run theoretically. Let's do fast API. Um, oh, I actually got to install Fast API first. So let's do pip install uh, Fast API. Before we press enter, we're going to do Fast API standard. This is because we want to install the version of Fast API that comes with the CLI interface. Because if you don't do this, we don't get the Fast API CLI. Once that is done, we can type Fast, and then it adds itself auto complete there. So Fast API, I believe it's just Dev. Let me take it on there. It is so I'm just gonna open this up. Um, let me just, uh, I think it should be here. Okay, so not found. Interesting. I did a massive, 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 massive mistake here. So it's meant to be an at here. This is meant to be a decorator to index function. So now, since you add that, now you have a hello world. Well, after I actually start this, so let's do fast API dev. And now we should have our in our HTML website here. So we have a world. It works. So now you want to add Tailwind CSS to the mix. Because as you can see, if we go over here and we start typing some Tailwind CSS, so text red 500, the color of the text doesn't change. That's because we don't have Tailwind CSS yet. So to get Tailwind CSS set up, what we have to do is install that fast API Tailwind. Now, once we've installed that, we are going to need um, a few things. Um, first thing we're going to need is a, a lifespan a fast API lifespan, and we are going to need um, static files. So if you guys, I'm assuming you guys are familiar with Fast API, hence you're watching this tutorial. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just do my thing here. So the first thing you will need is static files, and I'm gonna explain why we need this later on. Let's do Fast API static files import static files. 
and we're gonna have to initialize this at the at the top of our program because we are gonna actually need to use this in our lifespan and our lifespan needs to be above our app so at the top we are gonna initialize this name this static files echo static files now i'm just gonna um, reload my VS code here so i actually get type annotation because it seems like it's a little lost and doesn't under doesn't understand that static files does actually exist there we go so now we got type annotation static files and we're going to type dictionary and inside of dictionary we're going to put in the name of our static file so this can be any name but just make sure you stick to it my one is going to be static just to stick with the fast api convention so we create just static files now now we are going to mount this to our application in the bottom so we're going to do app mount and inside of here we're going to uh, we have to give the path the path that this um the path for our static folder is going to be inside of our HTML file, not the path to the static file, but the path, like the HTTP path to, to it. So basically this, but equivalent to the static files. I, 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 I'm very, very sorry if I'm confusing you. I don't, I don't know if this is um, making the explanation better, but hey, so inside of here, we're going to mount static files. And we also can name it as well. I'm just gonna just to stick to the convention because this is how they do it inside the fast API documentation. I'm gonna type static here, but I don't think this is needed. I think we can actually go without this. I think it will still work fine. But you should just stick to the convention. I just have it named. So there you go. So now the next thing we gotta do is create our lifespan. If you guys don't know what a lifespan is, um, it's a fast API thing. So if you go over to our documentation. That API lifespan. If you guys are confused any in any point of the video about what a, what a lifespan is, be sure to check this documentation link that I'm going to leave in the description. To create a lifespan, we need to create a synchronous function. So async def, and we're going to name this lifespan just to keep it simple. Uh, lifespan is going to be a function that takes in the application, so it's going to take in fast API. I won't return anything. I'm just gonna keep it empty for now. The next thing we have to do to this lifespan is that we have to append the async context manager decorator. So to get that, we need to do from context lib, I believe it is. Context lib import async context manager. There we go. Now we're gonna import Tailwind from the fast API Tailwind library. So I can do from fast API Tailwind, we're gonna import Tailwind. And now we can we can modify our lifespan function here. So this lifespan function, we're gonna create a variable called process. It doesn't have to be called process, it can be named anything. I, I can even name it um, pop in as well. It can be named anything, but we ha this has to um, we have to assign a variable to this because we are going to use it later inside the lifespan. So we're going to paste there tailwind and we're going to do tailwind dot compile. So this function is basically going to compile the tailwind CSS inside of our fast API program. Output style sheet path. This is going to be equal to static files. This is where we use static files, like files, dictionary, and then. We're going to do a plus sign and inside of this string, this is going to be the name of our um, CSS file for Tailwind. So this is going to be where basically Tailwind outputs the CSS file. So Tailwind is going to compile our Tailwind CSS here and it's going to output it into a normal CSS style sheet. And then that's going to be imported into this HTML file. So I'm going to show you that next. However, the next thing we want to do, the reason why I um, assigned a variable here, we're gonna, inside here we're going to do yield. Now, if you read the fast API documentation, you'll understand why we need to put yield here. I'm not going to explain this in this video because I don't want this video to be too long. So under here, we're going to do process and we're going to do process terminate. Now, I'm also not going to explain why we need to do this because if you go to the fast API Tailwind um, GitHub page, which I'm going to link below. In the example, it actually explains there why this terminate is needed. So I don't want to make this video too long. 
once you have our lifespan we want to assign that to the parameter here that's called lifespan also so we can do lifespan is equal to lifespan like so once that is done if you do run fast api you'll realize that we will get an error and i'm going to show you what the error is going to be directory static does not exist so we have to create a directory here called static so this can now um run and not fail there we go so instead of a static directory you can see that it's created that output of css file this is basically the output of the tailwind css so this file this css style sheet is what we want to input inside of our index.html file here so instead of here i'm going to do i believe it's link and then we're going to do slash static slash output css now like i said about the static right you can name this whatever you want right if you rename this you need to make sure you also rename the folder however this right here you can name it to anything you want i can even name it Ulu as well and that will work however i also have to update it here if i rename it so i'm gonna rename it to that this over here this is show you this is what happens so there we go so now tailwind is actually running now if i head over to our css here you can see that it, it, the font changed which is Tailwind actually working there. Now, you might notice something, usually when you're using Tailwind, you have um, IntelliSense here, and, and this is supposed to like, you know, kind of like um, give you type annotation and tell you what if you're doing this, the CSS wrong or you're doing it correctly. The reason why that doesn't exist is because we haven't created our tailwind.config.js file. To create that, the fast API Tailwind package comes with a neat command called fast API dash Tailwind dash in init. So we want to type this command, enter, and it should create a tailwind.config.js file here. And now once we have this, we should have type annotation. I go back to the intelligence. So you have type annotation there. So text red dash five. So that should make this text red. Okay, I completely forgot the next thing we have to do is we have to go to tailwind.config.js and we have to tell it where our content um, file is. So our content file is basically like our HTML file or um, whatever file that has Tailwind CSS inside of it essentially. So that is going to be our index.html. So we have to do index.html inside of here. Go over here, let's reload and now our text should be read. So now we have Tailwind CSS inside of Fast API. We didn't need to set up Node.js or NPM uh, or any of that. It's all just inside of Python. So yeah, now we can go to our index.html and you can you can you can change some things here. We can make the size bigger. We can do text. I believe it's text or is it font? Okay, it's text nine XL. That should make our text very big like this. We can make it bold. Um, I think it's uh, text bold or font bold. I think it's font bold. Um, that makes it bold. Oh, we want to center our text. All right, let's center our text. Let's do let's do um, text dot center. We we'll center our text in the middle. Or oh, we want to we want to add some padding. All right, let's add some padding. Let's do padding top. Let's go down here. Let's add a padding of ten to move the text a little bit down. There we go. So that Tailwind CSS inside a fast API. Very minimal steps. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and peace out.